When we go out to eat, we never agree on where to go. I want burgers! Pizza! Tacos it is. The one thing we do agree on is we all want unlimited high-speed data. That's why we switch to MetroPCS. Stop by MetroPCS with the whole family and get four lines with unlimited LTE data for just $100, period. MetroPCS. Wireless. Figured out. Coverage not available in some areas. Offers require reporting of number not currently active on T-Mobile Network. During congestion, the fraction of customers using more than 35 gigs per month may notice reduced speeds. Video streams at up to 40p. No tethering. See store for details and terms and conditions. Blog Talk Radio. Welcome to Nonprofit View, a forum where nonprofit stakeholders can share lessons learned and discuss the latest developments in the industry. My name is Valerie Leonard, your host. I'm a consultant to nonprofits, and I specialize in community and organizational development. I work with nonprofit organizations to help them make a stronger impact to their clients and community. You can find Nonprofit U on Facebook and Twitter, and I encourage you to comment early and often using the hashtags Nonprofit U, Community Benefits Agreements, or Sustainable Inglewood Initiatives. You can also leave comments on blogtalkradio.com forward slash nonprofit you, and you can email me questions at consulting at valeriefleonard.com or send messages through Facebook and Twitter. You'll find a Nonprofit You fan page on Facebook, and the Twitter account is at Nonprofit You. We'll be taking questions by phone and from my chat room at about the 20-minute mark. The call-in number is 347-884-8121. Again, that number is 347-884-8121. Today's episode is the benefits of being railroaded. The expansion of the Norfolk Southern Inglewood Rail Yard required the acquisition of 557 parcels of land, 104 parcels of which were owned by the city of Chicago within a local TIF and valued at about $1.1 million. The expansion presented a number of challenges, including displacement of Inglewood residents and the potential threat of eminent domain. It also compounded a number of existing environmental problems. We'll talk about how the community responded to the immediate crisis to develop solutions that would be mutually beneficial to the community, Norfolk Southern Railroad, and the city of Chicago. Again, we encourage you to call in with questions and participate in live chats at about the 20-minute mark. The call-in number is 347-884-8121. Nonprofit professionals and community activists, especially those who live in and around Inglewood, are especially encouraged to call in. Again, the number is 347-884-8821, I'm sorry, 884-8121, and we'll be taking those questions about 20 minutes into the show. Our guest for today is Reverend John Ellis. He's a founding member of Sustainable Inglewood. And before we get started, Reverend Ellis, can you tell us a little bit about yourself, Sustainable Inglewood, and how you got started in this whole process? Yes, good afternoon, uh, Ms. Leonard. Uh, can I call you Valerie or Val? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, either one? Yeah, either uh, one. I'll revert from Valerie to Val. <laughs> Val, I suppose, is I get to know you. Yes, my name is uh, Reverend John Ellis. Uh, to my neighbors, just John. Uh, most people don't even know that I'm a minister, but in fact, uh, I am ordained, and it's been... Uh, kind of a rudder in my life for many years now. Yeah, awesome. But essentially what it comes down to, I'm a resident of Englewood. In fact, I live on Englewood Avenue. Uh, you can't get much more Englewood than that. <laughs> right. And uh, I'm sorry? That's it, right. I, I was thinking those exact <laughs> words. Right. <laughs> okay. Uh, I've been here for about, what, 26 years now. Uh, as a homeowner, I was in and out mm-hmm. before that, but uh, I had a home for gentlemen uh, of modest means who might otherwise be considered homeless, except that they were living here, and I was overseeing their welfare and so on. Uh, now, I myself am over 55, and uh, it's about retirement time, 
and so I'm not mm-hmm. uh, that active in, in the business sense. Uh, but I still live here, still love the neighborhood, uh, do a lot of community garden, gardening, excuse me, uh, and occasionally I step forward for uh, such things as sustainable Englewood initiatives. Mm-hmm. Uh, how's that? That's great. So how does Sustainable Englewood Initiatives get started? Well, Sustainable Englewood Initiatives got started with a public notice in, I think, the Sun-Times. And by mm-hmm. the way, one of the things I've noticed <laughs> about my neighbors uh, is that they read all of their legal notices very carefully. Uh, I seldom, if ever, do. Uh, mm-hmm. But they read them very closely. And uh, so, in other words, they're not buying that paper just to get some <laughs> numbers for the lottery. I mean, they're looking they're looking through there for those notices. Uh, and for good reason, for good reason. Uh, this is where public policy uh, is announced. You know, it's not debated. I think it's announced. This is what the city, the state, the county will do. And you are put on notice that that's it. Anyway, we found a public notice in the Chicago Sun-Times, I think, in August of 2012, announcing that the Norfolk and Southern Railway Company uh, was going to expand south of 55th Street, Garfield, in Englewood, uh, and go south uh, basically along normal uh, to at least 62nd Street. Uh, they would go west. Mm, I've forgotten exactly how far west just at the moment. It's, uh, in this case, I think Parnell East as far as Princeton, maybe a little bit beyond that. But anything that was in there was going to be leveled. That is, all the houses were going to be removed the people who lived in them uh, would be bought out uh, or offered a chance to sell to the railroad. And then they would uh, be relocated with the railroad's assistance if they wished it. And, in fact, many of them did. Uh, so we're looking at really over was a quite mile. Concerned. Oh, yes. It's a very, it's a very big piece yeah. of property Five, there's more yeah. to come 557 yeah. parcels and when you figure the average block for a city has about 42 houses you know that's over a mile and a half you know assuming mm-hmm. that this mm-hmm. one each parcel is just one um, lot I'm, I'm sorry I didn't mean to interrupt you right roughly a thousand people or more maybe 1,000 to 1,500 people would be displaced. Uh, Wow. That's a lot. Very sudden. Now, they're going to make offers, uh, they really being a number of real estate companies that suddenly appeared, I think. Mm -hmm. Uh, They would come to you and announce that uh, they had a buyer and they would be interested in buying okay. the property. So, okay, so in the that interest of time, how they would did say, but they go ahead. Yeah, how did how did the organization start? So, so you saw this public notice. Well, very good. We where, took the legal notice, and we knew we knew it was or had a suspicion of what was happening. That nobody had been consulted in the neighborhood about it. Uh, so I read it, and I went over to Kelly Public Library and met John Paul Jones. John Paul Jones is a lifelong resident in Englewood. Uh, grew up here, lived here, worked for a number of uh, civic organizations, including Friends of the Parks. Mm-hmm. Uh, some people consider me an activist, but uh, really John Paul Jones is a professional public activist. He's out there mm-hmm. and well known. He's had a lot of experience in it. And yes, I felt that I, I something needed to be done. Everything I know about TIFF from from John and his former boss and Ben Jarofsky. So right. I guess I know John. Right. Right. Well he's very able 
at putting together a uh, package that one can follow. But we wanted to talk about it. And I said, uh, John, have you seen this legal notice? And actually, he had a copy of it. Uh, I think they were going to have a meeting of the Englewood Community and Family Task Force. Interestingly enough, I think the Englewood Community and Family Task Force had uh, uh, formed to get a community benefits agreement many years ago from CSX to the west of us, uh, near Western, say between Mm -hmm. roughly 59th and 72nd, 76th Street. I've forgotten the dimensions of that plan. But very similar situation. Uh, They were successful at getting a community benefits agreement. For my part, I was just concerned that this was taking place and we were not being notified uh, beyond a legal notice, that there Mm -hmm. seemed to be no uh, trickle down. Okay, not even a letter. No, 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 no. uh, Nothing like that. You, You would know that something was afoot when a real estate operator came to your door. And it became so obvious that something was afoot, uh, so many real estate operators around there making offers, that people grew very much concerned. And I think it was in August or thereabouts, in fact, uh, a number of the homeowners to the north of me uh, organized a meeting at John Hope Franklin School and demanded that somebody, you know, the alderman, the railroad, somebody, come forward and just tell them, what is it that you're up to? What is it that you are trying to do? Uh, The meeting, I think over 500 people actually attended. It was much more than uh, the railroad or the real estate people, city people had expected. Uh, And the meeting didn't go well. That is, it didn't go well for the... Uh, railroad, the city. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm trying to remember what all, which aldermen were there. I think Alderman okay, Cochran was there. Okay, and Inglewood had like five, five. You guys had like five at least aldermen five. At one time at we had time. about seven. Okay. At one time we had about seven. I think it's at least five now. It's completely gerrymandered. You know, okay, five so was you had up to the community meeting. area. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if I was okay, so to you go had to the, the community meeting area. and then you organized. I'm sorry. I'm, I said so. You had this meeting. It didn't turn out well. And no, no, we didn't organize, organize this. This, <laughs> there's, it gets more complicated. There's, there's homeowners up there. Mm-hmm. I am not a homeowner in that particular area, the affected okay. area, uh, but I'm right on the verge of it, right on the edge of it. Uh, Mm -hmm. John Paul Jones is a resident of the neighborhood and is well aware of the ins and outs of uh, expansion and so on and so forth, Uh, political nuts and bolts. What I was concerned about, I felt that, you know, it's one thing that the homeowners are up against and how that is going to be solved is largely going to be decided by them. are they going to sell? Are they going to tackle eminent domain? Whatever. There's probably not much that those who do not live in that area do not are not specific stakeholders, property owners in the area, can do uh, other than encourage those who live there to put on a good fight. Mm-hmm. Uh, as for those who must remain after whatever has happened, uh, presumably the people will be moved. It's pretty tough to stop a railroad in the city, as we discovered, or as we knew. But you have a lot of people surrounding the area who must live there. They will remain. After that whole area has been turned into a parking lot for Connex boxes, you know, the steel storage containers, okay, uh, so, all around so John, it. John, can I interrupt you for just a moment? So you went yes, to this meeting, right? The meeting didn't go I did not. In fact, well, we, and we, then you organized. John Paul did not know about it. We heard about it. It okay. happened about the time we were uh, over in Kelly Library talking about the legal notice. Obviously, some people uh, to the north of us uh, in the affected area uh, had read the legal notice as well. 
And they finally said, hey, we've had it. We want to know just what's going on here. And they called their alderman in and so on and you know, give us an answer. What What's happening here? They really didn't get a very good answer. That's what happened. Uh, as far as we were concerned, that was not a very good answer either because we were going to take uh, an environmental stand. Uh, whether or not the railroad or the city or whoever were going to take our houses, uh, odds are we're going to be here for a while. And if we're here, we don't want to be killed by mm-hmm. a particulate matter. Uh, virtually everybody around me on Englewood Avenue, I'm sorry to say, has uh, COPD, cardiopulmonary disease, uh, asthma, extremely mm-hmm. common. Uh, wow. Uh, the neighbors, my immediate neighbors, uh, both died within three days of each other just this last year. Uh, no. I believe the husband and wife, both of them, uh, I believe, were actually asthmatic. Uh, oh. They died okay. of heart attacks, and they were in their 50s. No, that's too bad. So there, there's okay. an issue here. Yeah, Let's we're say running on a time, um, can you share at a very high level, you know, what were some of the issues and when you came together to draft an agreement, what were some of the proposed terms? Well, for the community benefits agreement, and I myself was not that busy with it, but I can tell you what happened finally as far as that community benefits agreement was concerned, uh, the Norfolk and Southern agreed, or railroad, agreed to install modern pollution control equipment on about 38 trucks that move trailers and connex boxes around the yard. Uh, The railroad would also install clean engines or diesel filters on dozens of pieces of uh, lift equipment. The railroad, as well as the city, would work together on truck congestion relief and pollution reduction. Uh, And then finally, there would be a million-dollar fund uh, set up for sustainability projects in Englewood. There would be a million set aside for job training and preparedness in Englewood. And finally, uh, a railroad embankment that we called at that time the New Era Trail, would be mm-hmm. converted uh, to green space, biking, walking, hiking, etc., as part of a $30 million 10-year project by the city of Chicago uh, that would have required the city of Chicago to buy uh, that embankment from the Norfolk and Southern Railway. Uh, the embankment ran basically from uh, Princeton along 59th to a little bit beyond Damon, maybe to Hamilton. Uh, a good mm-hmm. mile and a half stretch. You kind of think of the 606 for the south side. <laughs> that's oh, basically okay. what we were talking about. Oh, that's great. Right, so and that, is, that is underway. Work, work on that yeah. is actually underway as we speak. Yep. Okay, so what were some of the lessons that you learned and what is the status of the project? And then after that, I'm going to open it up for questions. Well, I think the principal lesson learned, if you see a development uh, such as this happening, you obviously can't assume that the city is always a, uh, what should I say, a neutral judge. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) No, no, the city is involved, deeply involved in something like that. In, In this city, yes. Uh, so don't kid yourselves and think that you're just up against uh, some company. You're really going right to the heart of uh, politics in this town. A uh, number of politicians and uh, the party and so on are very deeply invested in this enterprise that you may mm-hmm. have some complaints about. Uh, my first suggestion to people When you get going, well, incorporate, which is what John Paul Jones and I did uh, in August of 2012, I think practically the same day, uh, so that we would have a, we would exist 
as a legal entity as Sustainable Englewood Initiatives. Also, he could write a letter uh, placing a bid <laughs> or a proposal uh, regarding the expansion of the mm-hmm. intermodal site. Not because we expect it to even be responded to, but just to put ourselves on record as being here. Uh, the other thing you have to do as quickly as possible, especially in a situation like this, get a lawyer or a team of lawyers, even better than that. Uh, we had to look around and find an expert on eminent domain and environmental matters, uh, really eminent domain. I was able to locate a very good attorney, Michael Thorne, who's in private practice here in the Chicago area. Okay. He couldn't take the case. Uh, He was just too preoccupied, obviously. But he said he would look around at the universities, law schools, and see if there was anyone available to pick up this case. Lo and behold, there was. We found uh, Nancy Loeb, an attorney, uh, heading up the Northwestern University Law School's uh, Environmental Justice Department. And uh, I'm not sure if I got the name correct, but anyway... Uh, that's what they did. They specialized in cases regarding uh, environmental justice. They would represent you or represent your group. And uh, we started working with her, and almost immediately we were referred to another group called uh, the Environmental Law and Policy Center, also located Mm -hmm. in the city. They're nationwide, but they have a very big presence here in Chicago. And they have lawyers, too. Uh, Faith okay. Bugle, who was their lead lawyer at the time, uh, would join up with Nancy, and we would tackle the railroad, and as we discovered, we had to tackle the city, too. And this was tough. This was very tough because, in fact, Nancy Loeb, in fact, knew a number of the key players uh, on the fifth floor, uh, knew them personally. And so this was going to be very, very tough, and we'd have to be very, very diplomatic as to how we handled it, even, you know, um, time is of the essence, and uh, we need to get our side heard and get these issues taken care of properly as quickly as possible. Okay, John, I'm going going to open it up for questions. We have quite a few callers, okay? So I'm going to open it up for questions. Okay, very good. All right, and thank you so much. Okay, caller, um, number 773-676-6207. Um, did you have a question? Well, it, contextually, this is Harold Lucas from Bronzeville. Hey, Harold, how are you? I'm fine. Historically, the western boundary of where we were restricted by restricted covenants to, to contain the African-American population on the south side to keep them out of white communities, was the B&O Railroad along Normal Avenue or Stewart Avenue. This, mm-hmm. is, this is the same area we're talking about in terms of the expansion of the rail yards, taking property from low-income African-American people, pushing us out of the city. So the point that I'm making is where is the class action lawsuit for the interest of the taxpayers who are being disenfranchised, even if they are Section 8 certificate holders or low-income people, they have a right to organize, and the railroad really should give the embankment to the community to give them some equity positions to be able to fight both the city and the railroad for the equity of the taxpayers in that area. And I would like to know the center point of the concentric circle of influence geographically in a circular motion of where the influence of this project is going to affect the taxpayers. Very good. What, uh, Hal? What uh, should I give you? Uh, diameter and miles, or <laughs> I, I think your point is well taken. This is actually not a new issue. This is, in a sense, uh, what we've stumbled on is an old wound. Uh, the dividing line, I think you're right. It was actually just a little west of normal. It was. It's used by Metra and everyone else. But that 
you're quite right. That was a boundary. That was a western boundary. And it's interesting how that parallels uh, the location where the uh, Connex boxes are going to be dropped. In other words, we're going to drop it in that area, which uh, evidently was acceptable at one time for black people to live, as far as whites were concerned in this town. <laughs> but now it's been decided. That that, hasn't uh, changed. Am I still in a dialogue here? Yes, you are. I'm sorry? I, that has not changed. It, it's just the, the tactics have changed. The intent is the same, which is the basis for what we should be talking about is a class action for lower and moderate income African Americans who are being systematically displaced and moved out of Chicago with the support of a lot of, of black elected officials who are compromised in the interest of supporting the city of Chicago against their own constituencies in many cases. Quite agree, especially on the point about the politicians. Uh, this okay. is not going to be easy because they are part of the problem. They are okay. part of the problem. We are but you're right. Out of time. I want to try to get as many callers as I can. Uh, we have a caller from 312-996-4783. Did you have a question or comment? Hello? Well, Hello? Hello. Okay. Harold and John, did you want to finish making your point? Yeah, he's got a very good point. I don't think it, we should allow this to, what should I say, allow it to die. This should not be the end of it. That is uh, the settlement uh, that the SEI got with the city and the railroad should not be the end of it. Uh, there was a, a housing group to the north of us. They were represented, as I recall, by the chairman of the Board of Elections, uh, Langdon Neal. I'm not sure what they were able to get, finally. I don't know that they ever, uh, beyond negotiating sale prices, I don't know mm -hmm. what they were able to do. We called Langdon, and we were interested in working together. And he was very excited at first, at least, and uh, said this was a great thing. Uh, we'd find a way. Uh, it just kept going on and on. We'll call back later. Call back later. Well, we realized, you know, by the time we get back later, uh, the Connex boxes will be there. <laughs> right, right, right. And these, the, okay. you know, these sales could take a long time. So uh, we decided, well, We'll go on our own. Uh, we'll certainly be supportive of the homeowners, that's for darn sure. But there's not much more that we can really do than that, uh, other than perhaps get in their way. Uh, some people might even consider us enemies because we're degrading the value of their property by saying that it's full of uh, toxic particulate matter that is not desirable and so on and so on and so on, which indeed it would be undesirable. That's what everybody had in it. First of all, that's if anybody had any respect for the human beings who lived there. Uh, and, and as you can see, when you add on the circumstances of the criminalization of black male youth and the gang opportunities and the drugs that are being forced in those areas, it is all part of a bigger plan that calls for a class action against the sons and daughters of the Great Migration to this northern city. So I think until you... Is John Paul Jones, what is the current status of the group? How are they affiliated with RAGE? How are they affiliated with other civic and economic groups in Bronze, in uh, Inglewood slash Bronzeville uh, that are addressing these issues? Okay. Oh, that's a tall order. Basically. Okay, we have all the two minutes. We need to start wrapping up. SEI consists of its own board of directors at this point. Uh, we never took on a paid membership. Uh, it was more or less like a posse comitatus. We gathered together to take on the railroad, and we had plenty of community support for that. But beyond that, that was about it. Uh, I don't know where Rage stood on the issue. Uh, we were allowed to come to meetings and speak if we wanted to. I did at least once. Uh, I don't know where they stand on it now. Uh, 
in fact, I don't know if Rage can stand on much of anything since it's supposedly uh, not for profit and they're not supposed to be picking up uh, the cudgels for any political party or political movement. It's a it's a platform. It's a public platform in which people, regardless of what they think or agree on and so on, can come forward and present okay. their ideas. That's okay. my understanding. Okay. Well, thank you so much, John. Thank you so much, Harold. We have to go. I want to thank our listening audience for listening to Nonprofit U Blog Radio Talk Show. Be sure to tune in next week when Susan Smith Richardson, the editor and publisher of the Chicago Reporter, she's going to be on and she'll talk about settling for misconduct. And that's the publication's new database on police misconduct cases at the neighborhood level. So that's going to be a really, really lively and engaging discussion and I hope everybody can make it. So until then thank you. take care. Thank you. I'm out. Yes, uh, thank you, Valerie. And and tell uh, Harold Lucas mm-hmm. I, I think he's on to something. I think he's on to something. What okay. do you think? I, Listeners I think out there definitely. is is Harold Lucas on to something? Uh, I think he is. Listen carefully. I, I think he's very much on to something. Um it's gonna take a lot of organization, um, and I guess a lawyer who is willing to work with people on a discounted or pro bono basis. But I think everything, anything is possible. Um, you might want to look at the mm-hmm. eminent domain issue, and there are a number of public um, public law groups, public interest law groups that might be willing to take it on. They might not be based in Chicago, but I, I can think of one or two that might be interested. So we'll talk offline. Very good. All right. So you take care, and thank you so much for being a guest, Harold. Thank you so much for calling in, and I thank all of our listeners for tuning in. All right. Bye-bye. God bless. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Daddy, where do babies come from? Uh, well, uh... Honey? Mommy went to the store. Oh, well, you see, um... Well, there's a mommy and a daddy, right? Right. And see, when they call GEICO, uh, they could save a bunch of money on car insurance. Oh, really? And that makes them happy? Yes, that makes them very happy. That's good. Yeah. Well, I'm glad we could have this talk, sunshine. (laughs) GEICO, because saving 15% or more on car insurance is always a great answer. Wow, nice haul. Told ya. Macy's Backstage has perfect last-minute gifts. With prices so low, you never need a coupon. I scored the perfect makeup palette. Super cute. I grabbed these cool drones for the guy. Nice. Here's a handbag for Aunt Helen. Found awesome toys for the kids. Cookware for the budding chef. Oh, and look what I got for Uncle Hank. A puppy chew toy? No, no, that's for Rex. They even have gifts for pets. Well, you know Uncle Hank. He'd love anything <laughs> we gave him. Macy's Backstage. Savings for everyday life. Details at Macy'sBackstage.com.